my freshman year, my roommate said, hey, uh, one thing we got to do is graduate on time and be ski bombs. My first winter here, I got lucky. I got to work for the ski resort, and that sort of set up the whole following scenario. I was a chairlift operator the first year, and the second year, I got on the trail crew. Those were probably the best years of my life because we, uh, we skied a ton. It snowed constantly the first winter I was here. And halfway through that first winter, I realized that skiing was, wasn't something that you learned in one winter. So that's why I totally bailed on going home and then really became a ski bum and committed to staying in Wyoming until I learned how to ski. Here I met Bob Woodall, who was working for the newspaper, and who was shooting NASTAR ski photos. We were the Jackson Hole ski photographers. We were starting to try to branch out beyond ski racing and shoot pictures of people skiing. We needed some advertising, so we produced the Village Focus, and then we changed it to the Jackson Hole Skier magazine when we started wanting to bring in other aspects of the ski community. The Jackson Hole Mountain Resort, that's the epicenter, that's the big draw, you know, the tram going up 4,100 vertical feet into this big alpine ski terrain, magnificent mountains, big wide open bowls and the steep long faces, Corbett's Coulard, Cody Peak, Central Coulard and Four Shadows and all of the backcountry terrain that opened up. Prior to 1999, the gates were not open and it was a cardinal offense to go out of bounds and you could go to jail for it. The Jackson Hole Air Force, Benny Wilson, Howard Henderson, those were the two guys that really were the core energy of that group. It was about going skiing beyond the ropes and not talking about it, just doing it. It was hard for us to get good powder photos because they really wouldn't wait around for us. They were just racing from one air to the next and we just had to try to keep up with them and that was the program with those guys. The thing that drives me to keep doing it after 40 years is producing something that is magic that moves someone to see it and go, wow. And you don't always get magic. You may go for days without getting any magic. And then all of a sudden that day, wow, we killed it today, we got the magic. That's what keeps you going. I guess we're all looking for some recognition. It's like, wow, that's really nice. I, I think if I never heard that, I, I would probably not continue because it is it is difficult to uh, haul the gear and to keep your stoke up I mean really wouldn't you rather be free skiing 40 years later this September I'm still here <laughs> and I'm still doing it and I'm still fired up about it I asked the surgeon after the surgery uh, how it went, and he said they were so bad there was a hole worn in them. So I went, yeah, man, I used them up.